In our previous tutorial, we learned what the MVC pattern is. In this tutorial, we'll uh, create a web application that implements the MVC pattern. Uh, the use case that we have is a simple login application. So we'll have a login page and uh, we'll ask the user to enter the user ID and the password. Uh, once the user submits the user ID and password, we will authenticate the credentials and uh, if the credentials are authenticated successfully, then we show a greeting page for the user. And uh, if the credentials are not authenticated successfully, then we uh, redirect back to the login page. So it's a very simple use case, but uh, this will give us uh, an opportunity to use the MVC pattern to implement this. So let's think of the components we'll have to write for implementing this use case. So we'll need a controller, a business service, a model, and a view. So let's start with the controller. We know that the controller is actually a servlet in our case, so we will have to implement a servlet. Now, when the request for a login is initiated, the user ID and password is passed on. Now, we need a controller or a servlet to intercept this request and collect the user ID and the password. So we will have to implement a login servlet. Now this servlet will capture the user ID and the password and after that it does not do the authentication itself. It has to pass this on to a business service. Remember a waiter does not know how to cook. So the business service will be an authentication service. It's a simple Java bean and uh, it'll have a method for authenticating the user. Now after the business service runs its uh, method and returns a response, that response has to be contained in some value. It could be a primitive, it could be as simple as a boolean, yes or no, or it could have more information and it could be a separate Java class. So we will implement a model which will contain this information that will be the authentication result. And once we have this authentication result, the controller, which is a login servlet in this case, has to direct the uh, control to the corresponding view. Now, if the authentication result says that uh, authentication was successful, then the controller has to direct the flow to the uh, success message page. And uh, if the authentication result is a failure, then the controller has to redirect to the login page. So as far as the view is concerned, we see two pages here. One is the, the login page and one is the greetings page. So we will be implementing these two pages. So these are the components that we need to implement a simple login uh, functionality as we have planned. So let's let's go ahead and start implementing these. Okay, so I'll start off with a new project. Right click new project and I will create a dynamic web project. I'll call this the login app. Next, we'll leave these as defaults. So I'll generate a web.xml and finish. Okay, now Eclipse has created this project for us. So let's create these modules in the order in which uh, a user would actually uh, access them. So, what would be the first step? The user sees the login page. So, let's implement the login page first. So, I'll right click new and I'll create a new JSP file. I'll call this login.jsp. The default should do. Now I have our black template. Let me change the title to login page. Now the body will be very simple. It'll just have uh, two text boxes, one for the username and one for the password, and the submit button. Of course, all these three will be inside a form tag. Call this form. I need to have an action here. I'll have action equals, let me put this as blank for now. Uh, we'll have to fill this up with our controller servlet, which will handle this uh, login form. Now the method, I'll specify it as post. Uh, if I do not give a method here, it'll automatically default to the 
get method and uh, the get method will not do for a login form because that would mean that whatever parameters we pass which is the user id and the password will be visible in the url so since we are doing a login action we need to have that secured so we'll have a post method and uh, we'll submit these parameters using a post method okay now inside the login form we need to have two text boxes call this text box user ID. I need to give this a name so that uh, the parameter will be passed with this name to our servlet. Type equals password. This is our uh, password text box. If we add a type equals password then uh, HTML uh, will actually, the generated HTML will actually have a password text box and it will hide the entries. name equals password and uh, these are our two text boxes I'll also have a simple submit button and this is our login page let's save this and uh, let me try running this just to make sure that uh, it works fine Okay, our login page is working fine. In fact, let me add a caption here so that it's more user friendly. This is much better. Now we have our login page. So we need to next create a servlet that captures these parameters and we need to have a do post method of that servlet and uh, we need to capture the user ID and the password in that do post method. So let me create a servlet. New servlet. I'll call this class as login servlet. It will of course extend the HTTP servlet class. Now, I don't need to give any description. Initialization parameters, we'll leave this as blank for now. I don't want to initialize anything. URL mappings, let me make this something more uh, easier. Instead of login servlet, I'll just call this login. Okay, next, I don't need the constructors. I don't need to do get, I just need to do post because in our form, we are doing a post. So I'll just click that and finish. Okay, our uh, login sub that is created and we have a do post. Now in our do post, we need to capture these values. So first of all, these values have to be submitted to our login sublet. We know that the context, uh, the path for the login servlet is login. So let me set this form to the action should be login. So that whatever we submit here goes to the servlet. Let's save this. Now we need to code here. Let's remove this to do. Now what do we do? The first thing we do is get the request parameters. So I will declare two strings. Request dot get parameter. The value here should be same as the name of the text box here. So this control 
the value of that control gets captured here so I will use the same value similarly for password Okay, now we have the user ID and the password captured here as two strings inside the doPost method. Now we need to have a business service so that this doPost method will pass this uh, user ID and this password to that business service and the business service will take care of authenticating and uh, checking if this password is correct for this user ID. So let's create a business service here. The business service will just be a simple Java class a new class and uh, I have the package I'll create a new package called service and inside that I'll create a login service and finish okay now in this login service will implement a method called authenticate. So I'll create a public boolean authenticate. Now this will take two string parameters. Okay, so in a typical web application, what would happen here is that this authenticate method would connect to a database where we have stored the user ID and passwords of all the users in the, of the application. And uh, it would pull up the password for this user ID or compare the user ID and the password with what's stored in the database to make sure that the authentication is done. But uh, in our example, we will not be implementing this because our focus is on MVC. Uh, we can uh, have a, you know, a database table and make a JDBC connection over here and uh, validate this. But for now, just to have this uh, method working, I'll implement a dummy method. So what I'm thinking of doing here is to check if the user is the password is null or not. Okay, if the password is null or if the password contains only blank spaces and no actual characters, then I will say authentication is false. It, you know, it fails the authentication. But as long as the password is not null and it has some characters in it, then I will make the authentication successful. Again, this is just a dummy implementation, but it should serve a purpose of uh, having a sample uh, business service that we can use. So what I'll do here is I'll just compare the password to null Now if password is not equal to null, or let me make this password equal to null. If the password is null, or if you trim the password and it ends up being you know, uh, a password with all spaces without any characters, then what I'll do is I'll return false. If it's not, then I'll return true. Again, this is just a dummy method that we're implementing. We are not uh, bothered about getting this from the database, but we could do that. And uh, if we have the database uh, table, where we have the user ID and the password, this would be the way, place where you would actually do the authentication. So let me save this. 